We've got some hey, I'm Luis, and I'm Luis, and you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last three years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn content into profit, just go to contentisprofit.com. Woo! Woo! There All we right. go. So we decided that we're going to record our intros live. Yeah, we're going to do that a little bit different. Maybe maybe we're going to have an intro just for when we edit the videos. We're going to plug it in. But as we do the podcast, we're going to do them live. Yeah. So I hope that was okay. Yeah, what I do think, you guys think? What I do you guys think? That's think? a good good decision. It's, it's fun too. You know, get, get in the vibe, get the energy up. Yeah, dude. So finally, first uh, first episode ever. How do you think? What, yeah. like, what do you think? Fun story. This is actually not the first episode ever. Um, we actually recorded a few <laughs> a few months ago. A few, we, a few we, months ago. We actually had them in Spanish. We had some in English. The thing is, we got so technical with it that we never got to edit the podcast. So this time we decided to keep it simple. Just one camera recording, both of us. And let's just get to talking pretty much. All right. We have this thing too. Yeah. Yay. Good choice. So that, that's a little bit of a fancy toy that we decided to purchase a few months ago. And that's kind of like when we started. But you guys don't need this. Okay. Yeah. So before we start with today's episode, I just want to get everybody on the same page. Right. And Luis Daniel, can you tell me a little bit about what are we going to be talking about in this podcast, in Content is Profit. What is Content is Profit? Content is Profit is basically the new company that we decided to kind of start. Like, it's a new twist and is focused on how the content that you produce and the things that you publish on a daily basis can turn into profit for you and your business. What does that mean? We're going to discover that in the episodes to come. So, there leave it go. to that. Does that, All make, right. does that make sense? I hope it does. I hope it does. If, if it doesn't make sense... Please leave us a question. We are going to be answer, getting back to those as soon as we can. All right. So, Fonsi, you know, um, today we're going to be talking about your story and how you got started with this. And it, 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 it wasn't always content is profit or it wasn't always Beast Bros. It was yeah. only bro, only you at, the, at first. So It, it was just, <laughs> it I was, mean, we, we started together. I mean, uh, we, we ride together, you know, guys. <laughs> but... Yeah, at the beginning you were very busy with your job, and it was yeah mostly mostly me. Yeah. yeah. So how do you, how do you start it? Like, why do you decided to start a company with uh, with your brother? With yeah, me? that's it's a very good question. You know, I mean, everybody has their own background and their own stories on how t how they they got to where they are, right? And for, so everybody knows. You can see I have a, an Arsenal jersey. I'm a huge soccer fan, especially an Arsenal fan. Yeah, today we, we were supposed to wear our business uniform. Yeah, but today my, my team is playing, so I cannot, I cannot betray them. I got to yeah. wear their jersey. Yeah. And so I grew up in Venezuela. We both did. We, we were born and raised in Venezuela. And when I was 18, after high school, I, I, got, I was fortunate enough that I got a scholarship to play soccer here in the States. And so I moved to Texas at first. I spent about three years in Texas going to school there, playing college soccer. And then I moved here to Jacksonville. How, um, how was that experience in Texas? It was awesome. I mean, it was changed. It was a big cultural shock because I was I first moved into a super small town. It's called Wichita Falls. With all due respect, I love Wichita Falls. It was awesome. I came from the capital of Venezuela, Caracas, so very big city in comparison to Wichita Falls, but it was great. I met um, really great people, but I think it was there where I started realizing that I didn't really want to follow the natural path of someone that goes to college. I, I, I never... <laughs> yeah, thank you. There we thank go. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I never realized... I, I think I, I realized at that moment that I I didn't enjoy going to school as much. I like to do my own thing. And I mean, at that moment, it was soccer. Soccer was my own thing, right? I, I liked, I was thinking of, okay, who who can I coach? Can I coach other kids? Um, so yeah, time went by. Three years in Texas. Then I moved to Jacksonville. I went to college here. And while, while I was here, I was actually playing for... Um, 
for a professional team. I was part of their first team, um, of their, their very first team that they came up. I did the tryouts. They selected me, and that's the reason why I stayed in Jacksonville, not because of this guy right here. <laughs> and so, so would you say like that 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 time was it easy for you? Like, were you having a hard time kind of adapting? What what was going so, on through your head? It was not that difficult adapting because, I mean, I'd been in the U.S. for a few years at that point. I was just living in an air mattress at your living room, which was always fun, of course. Um, it was not just me and him, by the way. It yeah. was like three people, well, four people plus my brother. So yeah, it was plus his, two dogs. His now wife, two dogs, two other roommates with their, with their pets. So yeah, it was busy. It was fun, though. It was the frat house. It was, it was it was fun. It was a learning experience. So I was sleeping in the air mattress. And I've always, I'm very thankful to soccer because it, it allows me to make a lot of, like, build relationships quickly, make a lot of friends. And one of those friendships actually led to my first job, which was, um, led to my first job, which was Happy Feet Soccer. So for those that don't know about Happy Feet, it's a, it's a franchise. We would go to daycares and we would just teach these kids how to play soccer, pre pretty much. Kids two to six year old. So um, I think we develop a lot of patience working with <laughs> with, with these kids. And yeah. Believe me, adult, adults are not so different. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, fast forward a little bit more. And we, I graduated from college. And when I graduated, I was like, okay, I think it's enough of happy feet. I, I love it. I love working with the kids. And my boss was, honestly, he was super cool. We still have a really good relationship with him. But I was like, okay, I, I know for a fact that I don't want to go and get a job. But at the same time, I, don't, I have no idea what I want to do. But at the same time, I know I do not want to stay in Happy Feet because if I stay here working with these little kids, eventually I might not want kids of my own. <laughs> just because it was it was very intense yeah uh, so, very intense so work during that time and you can correct me if i'm wrong but uh with that job it was not just coaching right it was also trying to sell correct. this program so it was not just coaching we had um after my brother stepped down because he 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 worked there as well i got the director role so i was in charge of marketing the program i had to go to schools and sell the program to the parents um Honestly, on the on the surface, the job was coaching the kids, but I mean, as any other business, if you don't have clients, if you don't sell the program, you are not like the business is not going to be successful. So I knew that, but at the moment, I wasn't confident enough to sell. Um, if that makes sense, I didn't I didn't know how to sell. I, I never got education on how to sell a program. I when I was in college, honestly, I never took a class that they told me, "Hey, you got to." Um, you got to start selling. You and this is the way you do it, right? This is how the brain works. This is how people think about stuff. So it was a hard moment as well just because um, even though, again, my boss was awesome, maybe he didn't have enough confidence in in me to sell the program. Uh, but as everything, it was a good learning experience. So one day I remember I was driving to one of the schools and – at this point, I've always like Googled, you know, kind of like, oh, how to make money online. Even when I was a kid, I was always like, how to make money online, huh? how to make this online. And I run into ClickBank and just a bunch of like affiliate marketing stuff. But I've never actually paid attention to that. I remember looking at the big sales pages and I would like scroll through them. It's like, what, what is this? Like why, why people write so much, right? Like just go straight to the point. And there's, there's a why because why sales pages are that long, right? And but at that point, I was like, ah, I just want the information quick. I just want to learn everything as fast as I can. Um, but again, that's that's a conversation for another day. Um, so at this point, I'm researching and I found this book. It's called um, Dot Com Secrets by Russell Bronson. And I was waiting to go into a school and I was reading this book. Right. And I was like, oh, man, like this is super interesting. The, it, li it goes in depth on how to build pretty much a business online. And I started reading it. And in my mind, it was just like blowing into pieces. I was like, oh, we can do so much with this. And that moment, I think that that moment should change also, my, my perspective on, on business a little bit, on how to, how to approach business. 
Also, um, I think we, we were already kind of having that conversation in the background, right? Like, we're, like, trying to, okay, what are we going to do? And, uh, yes, you know, we, we had some ideas, but we never really knew, you know. Yes, definitely. I mean, I remember you told me once that you were starting um, a business. I mean, you didn't tell me once. You you kind of, like, started it a blog called Mass Life. Oh, yeah. And we actually had an event and everything on the, on a summer. We'll talk about that um, in the next episode. Yeah, that, Don't worry. That's what that's. Yeah, exactly. That's for next guys, episode. Yeah. But yeah, we, we already kind of, we were having that conversation in the background. So I ran into this book, bought it, started reading it. I remember the exact same place where I was. I was in front of a Panda Express. <laughs> uh, don't judge me, please. It's, I love Panda Express. But I was sitting in front of a Panda Express in my car, reading this book. And I mean, it was interesting because... What was that? That was, that? That, was a, that was a gong moment. That was my epiphany right there at that <laughs> moment. And I mean, it was, I, it was honestly, I read this book and I, I, my thought was, I need to go back to my brother and tell him about this to just share it with him. So I went back, we started talking and right at that moment, we ran across an advertisement from this guy called Ty Lopez. I know a lot of you might not be fans of him. Um, we don't follow him as much anymore, but at the moment he presented an opportunity that we're extremely thankful for because thanks to his opportunity, we are where we are right now, right? And he was selling a program where, where you could build your own social media marketing agency. And my brother and I looked at each other and we were like, okay, how much does this cost? It was uh, it was $1,000. I think the course was $1,000. And we're, was a, yeah. we look at each other, we're like, do we have $1,000? We're like, no, we don't have $1,000. There, there was no cash at the so moment. So we're like, okay, do you have a credit card? I didn't have a credit card. My <laughs> Mines were like all Ma maxed out. Yeah, maxed out and... He was like, I have a credit card. Like, we can put in a credit card. I was like, you it, know what? It wasn't Sometimes, that simple. Believe me, guys, it wasn't that simple. But yeah, we did it. Like, we were, like, sweating. It's like, should we do it? Should we not? You know, at that moment, we didn't really know the power of investing in yourself. That was actually our first big investment in ourselves. And More than college because, you know, uh, up to this point, we both went to college. But we were both on a soccer scholarship. So we did work for, you know, for those degrees. Yeah. We played and sweat and, and did a lot of workouts and performed for four years straight so we could afford college. But money-wise, like out of our own pocket, uh, I think that was the first time that we invested that, that big, right? Yeah, no, definitely. That was definitely the, our, our first biggest investment. Uh, and it honestly, it paid out. It, it felt huge, you know. It felt huge. Right now, it might not feel. For some people, it might, but... Yeah. Uh, at that moment, it felt really big. Yeah, it felt big. It, it paid out, though. So so what, what we, would you say, like, after that investment? Like, what? Did you come up with a plan? Did we come up with a plan? Like, what was, like, so the next the next step? After we invested, I mean, you were still working at that moment with in the within the fitness industry. And we were like, okay, we're going to start working with restaurants, right? We saw restaurants as, a, as an easy prey. We're like, I mean, you just <laughs> take pictures of food and people go by, right? But we didn't have a lot of the concepts and principles that we know now. And we didn't know how to run a business. We didn't know how much to charge anything. I mean, I remember the first restaurant that I pitched. I was like, they, they asked me, how much do you charge? I was like, uh, 500 bucks. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> Out of fear. <laughs> I was so scared. I was so scared. I was like, I've never charged so much for anything. I mean, I've never charged for... Uh, the, the membership that I used to charge for in, in Happy Fit, my first job, was 30 bucks a month. So and we were 30, And we were scared to sell that. To, exactly. To 500 a month. I was like, oh, man, I'm, I'm like super crazy. But, but now looking back into it, I think it was the lack of confidence of me of us being able to deliver right we, we we didn't we didn't have that trust in ourselves that we were able to deliver um the the product the service but again story for another day so i think our plan was going to that and then i mean we stumble between you know like we're charging way too little um we're like all over the place what no, no what processes exactly, uh, what exactly were we doing with those restaurants yeah so it was we, we started focusing on content, just like, hey, uh, we'll come, we'll take pictures of your food, we'll just manage your Instagram, your Facebook, we'll just post it. You don't have to take care of any of that, right? And then, like, that's pretty much it. Like, you, you'll get clients. But let me tell you, it's not like that. It's, it's not as simple as that. Um, and there's so much that goes into this with restaurants. I mean, not restaurants, but any business in general. 
Uh, but I'm gonna kind of like just go above it all. Yeah, that, that we'll we'll tell those stories like in debt, but like maybe what was like the biggest lesson, right? After working with these restaurants and yeah, I mean the, uh, presenting the content, the way that we were doing it, right? Yeah. What, what maybe what was that biggest? The I mean, big lesson? For, honestly, for me, the biggest lesson is that we were undercutting ourselves. You know, we were we weren't charging enough uh, for the amount of work that we were doing, but also is because. Again, like I said, we weren't confident enough in what we were offering. And and then we didn't have any processes. We would just go randomly like, okay, what do they need? And then we started doing certain things. But also we noticed that the content that we were doing, it, it wasn't working, right? Because it didn't have a purpose. The content didn't have um, a call to action. It didn't call people to bring them to the restaurant. It was just like, Cute pictures and that that that's it right and and, it, and it's great that you that you mentioned this right because nowadays we see a lot of people that are very active on their social media right are they very active publishing and and if you the, the main thing here i think is like if your objective is just to put out information out there and uh, nothing wrong with that right uh but if that's the goal Great, but if your goal is to use this content and the publishing machine that you eventually can build, right, um, as a sales driver, we yeah. need something in the back uh, where you can direct people to, right? So at the moment, that was some of the things that we were selling, and uh, we weren't seeing it, right? We were we didn't know how to track it, right? Is that is that is that accurate? Yeah, I mean, very very accurate. You know, I'm the restaurant. And, and also, they didn't know their numbers as well. So when we shared that information, they shared that information with us. We didn't know exactly what to do with it. Uh, we didn't know how to measure and track their results, like he was saying. Uh, so it, it became very, very challenging. So at the end, we actually stopped working with them. Um, we actually engineered a little plan, a little master plan, where my brother, he took me to... He actually took me to... <laughs> to his fitness studio where he was working and we presented everybody uh, on how our content strategy could help their business, right? And at this point, we were more educated. We were gaining confidence in what we what we offer. And so they actually hired me, kind of like a subcontractor slash employee. Um, so I started working with them for all their studios here in, in Jacksonville, Florida, where we are. And... We, we started testing lots of things, right? Like what type of content we started. And while we were doing all this, we were educating ourselves as well. We we're following marketers like Russell Brunson. We started running into Steve Larson, right? Which he is now, we consider him our mentor. He's amazing. Um, and many others. I, I also think a very important factor here was that the, the studios that we brought this into, like fitness wise, right? It's very... It's a lot of very active people inside of the business. Yeah. Like you have coaches, you have the members, right? And they were actually willing to do this, right? So that's maybe one of those steps that if you're if you're looking into that content creation, that publishing, right? And we're gonna talk about the different types and video and so on. At the time, we we're doing video with them, right? And we had these awesome personalities that they were not fearful to be in front of a camera. Right, and if you are, there's ways to make yeah, that a little bit better. Totally fine. So it, it helped us a lot to to try different things, to be consistent, to to do a lot of tries, right? Yeah. And uh, and that was very, very awesome. Very awesome. Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, it was it was great that it we had great. the opportunity to test all these things, all these variables, um, because we couldn't do that with the restaurant, right? Like, it's it's difficult to to have a sense of community in a restaurant to be honest, but in a fitness studio, you have the people that are, they are the members. They're going consistently. You got the coaches. People look up to the coaches, right? Um, you got the front desk staff too, that they're, they're friends with everybody that goes by. So there were so many elements that it was pretty much like the for, a formula for successful content. And it was great for us because at the same time, while we were working with them, we had the opportunity to see other social media agencies um, pitch the studios multiple, multiple times. And I remember specifically this one day I was sitting and we had like four or five different agencies like pitching and I was just listening one after the other. And in my mind, I was like, wow, all these agencies are saying the exact same thing. They're, they're pitching the exact same process 
just maybe changing the terms a little bit. And I mean, they, I, I don't know if the owners realized or not, but I was like, at the end, I was like, it doesn't matter who you who you hire, they're all going to do the same exact thing. And the problem is that since they were doing the same exact thing, they were getting the same exact results. And, and they wanted something different. <laughs> those results were uh, expensive leads, very expensive leads, actually, for the business and, and not enough clients, right? So that moment, we ask ourselves, okay, like, why? Like, what is it that that changes, you know, like what is it that makes someone turns into a lead or even better turns into a customer better in a, in, in an easier way without friction than just advertising, you know, like an average adver slap an advertisement on your face, right? Like, right. Like these agencies were doing. And I think that's the moment where we started thinking about it. Like, wow, you, you know, we started observing what these great marketers were doing Um, again, Russell Brunson, Steve Larson, especially we were following them. Um, even on, you know, even Gary V, right? Because yeah, Gary V, exactly. Even he's he's not much of a direct marketer per se, but yeah, he is consistent, consistent with his publishing, and that's what we noticed with these people that they were all very extremely consistent with their content. They were just. Yeah. Publishing and publishing uh, day in and, and day we, out. When we talk publishing, is uh, it's not just organic, right? Um, ads have to have play a very big piece in yeah, this thing because definitely um, it, it's basically. And we're we're gonna get into this obviously as we move on into the podcast. But it's it's um, it's a faster way to reach your audience. Yeah, and it, it, it's an element, right? It's, it's an one element of the elements of publishing of the bit of the bigger picture, the right? big machine. Yeah, because. Again, we all know this is no secret that organic reach has been limited, so people spend more money, especially for businesses, right? Um, but you cannot just slap an ad on someone's faces and pretend that they're gonna you're gonna create trust that way, and they're just gonna buy immediately for you, right? Like there's there's gonna be a lot of frictions. They're gonna have questions. They're gonna have um, yeah, they they want their questions answered by you. Yeah. So so, so after after identifying those little items, right? What uh, how like from that moment on, how how did this transform into content's profit? Yeah, you know, from your point of that's, view, that's that's a great question, right? So fast forward a little bit more, and I stopped working for that studio. But fun stuff, like fun anecdote, I guess they hired us as we they are our clients now. I guess that's that's how you say it, and we're in this together. Yeah, we're in this together. But yeah, we transitioned. We started. We started investing more in ourselves. We started uh, invested in these programs, and they helped us pretty much nail down our message. Right, like what is it that you guys can do? And if you know about funnels, uh, direct response marketing, there's a lot of elements that go to it, right? And, and we were doing all those when we work with people, but that's a problem. You don't have processes and. When you go into someone and they're like, oh, can you do this? And we're like, yeah, we'll do it for you. <laughs> and then somebody else will do ask something else. We're like, yeah, we'll do it for you too. And it would just get confusing when we were trying to fulfill everybody. So after my brother, he, he quit earlier, well, in 2019, now 2019, because we're yep. in 2020 now. The as we're recording this podcast, it was maybe three months ago. No, like four Four months ago. Four months ago. And so he quit his job and he's like, you know what? I'm all in. So I think it was that moment where we were like, okay, like we're all in. Uh, you get a risk it to get the biscuit <laughs> and we are going to figure this this thing out, right? And, and at that moment, we we're offering a little bit of everything. And after investing more in ourselves and learning from these people, we, the light went out. After investing with, with these people, we realized that we needed to focus in one of the elements, one of the elements of the whole funnel, right? And we were like, hey, our whole business experience has been around content, uh, has been around direct response marketing. So, and we are pretty good at it. So let's focus what we do. The one thing that we do is create direct response content that brings friction, less sales, 
Let's go. <laughs> Vamos. <laughs> so, yeah, that's and that's what we do now, guys. That is content is profit is creating direct response content that brings frictionless sales to your fitness studio, baby. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, that was, you know, a little bit quick. And, you know, as we move forward with this podcast, which we will, the idea is to do one episode a week. And, you know, we want to hear, like, what you guys think, right? First off, if you are on the Facebook Live feed, put any questions, any comments that you that, that you feel like it, good, bad, positive, happy, sad, angry, whatever you want, you can put it in there. And also in the podcast while you're listening, all the different platforms, let us know what you guys think. You know, if you have any questions about content in general, about publishing, how can your content, what you have to offer, how, how can you get your value that's inside of you, your knowledge out to the public, right? If you're in the fitness industry, Honestly, these frameworks work in any industry. We're right now focusing on the fitness. But if you have any general questions, you can go to contentisprofit.com. You can drop us your number one question in there. Also in the comments of any of the platforms. And we'll be happy to help you guys out uh, move forward. Yeah, we'll get back to you guys. Feel free, guys. Feel free to leave as many questions as you, as you want. Any feedback that you may have as well is more than welcome. We want to make this podcast for you uh, not only make it educational, but entertaining as well. So you guys have a good time while you're listening to it. Hey, it's, it's like everything that he says, people like, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for tuning in again. If you have any questions on how to get more memberships through content, you know, how to sell more programs, just go to contentisprofit.com. See ya. Thank you guys. Bye.